we are so privileged to have uh, six leaders here who play huge roles in our state. Um, can we uh, provide little bios on what your uh, key roles are? Can we start with you, Kevin? Uh, sure. So uh, I'm the executive director or chief cook and bottle washer uh, of Piedmont Triad Airport Authority. Um, been here for, uh, I guess, about 15 years or so. Um, and um, obviously, we've got an awful lot of economic development stuff going on here that uh, you're hearing about somewhat in the news. Glad to be with you all. Thank you. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, David. Um, I'm Mike Fox, and I am the chairman of the North Carolina Board of Transportation. We appreciate that. Mike is a very uh, bashful guy. He's also the head of the president of the Piedmont Triad Partnership. Um, Brian Clark uh, from Wilmington, would you tell us about yourself? Excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Clark. I'm the executive director for the North Carolina State Ports Authority, uh, based out of Wilmington. Uh, manage the facility here as well as Moorhead City and our own port in Charlotte. Been with the, the organization for coming up on six years now. Awesome. Uh, Carl, the CEO of the North Carolina Railroad Company, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Carl Warren. I'm the President Chief Executive Officer of the North Carolina Railroad Company. NCR corridor extends from Charlotte all the way to Moorhead City. And in addition to managing the corridor, we also help fund economic development projects around the state. Great. Uh, Peter, uh, you're one of our Raleigh representatives. Sure. Pete Marino. Um, I'm the current freeways chair for the Regional Transportation Alliance. I'm also a partner with the Smith Anderson Law Firm here in Raleigh and been practicing construction and public infrastructure law for about the last 30 years. Great. And, and Joe? Try that again. Joe Malazzo, I'm executive director of the Regional Transportation Alliance. It's the voice of the regional business community on transportation issues in the Research Triangle area of North Carolina. This is great. Well, uh, first question I wanted to ask is the importance of transportation to economic development. And today's a great day to ask that as we tape this on a day where there's been a big announcement in our state. Uh, Mike, can you kick it off? Kick it off on your view on economic development and transportation's role. Sure, absolutely. I think uh, economic or transportation is one of the key questions that any uh, business leader looks at in deciding where to expand their business or locate, uh, you know, a new business along with workforce. Um, and we're really fortunate here in North Carolina that we have spent decades improving our transportation infrastructure and that infrastructure uh, i've been told personally by the decision makers in many of the largest economic development announcements that we've had in the last year in our state's history that the transportation infrastructure was a critical piece to uh making uh them making the decision for north carolina Great. Somebody else want to share uh, their view? Uh, Carl, uh, how does it, you've been a longtime railroad executive. What, what's the role? How important is transportation networks to site selection? Yeah, I think I think it's it's vital. Um, I mean, not only do you need to think about things like domestic and international air service, which you know we've got some folks on here who can speak to far better than I, but when it comes to rail, uh, rail is a critical differentiator for winning economic development projects and you know one thing i've i've observed over the last several years i've been back in north carolina now for about two years and the, the 10 years before that when i was at, at csx um you know when states were going after big manufacturing projects um, being able to put together a rail solution that also included the port and also included a good linkage into the state's approach to recruiting economic development deals was a big differentiator for a lot of the manufacturing projects that that I saw land. And when I think about the, the success last year with, with Toyota and the visibility that issue had, the potential with things like, uh, like VinFast and, and some of the other projects that are working or the project that we, uh, got the privilege of witnessing the announcement for today in Lexington, Siemens. Um, supply chain and rail are absolutely critical to winning and absolutely critical to 
uh, achieving the differentiation that makes North Carolina stand out. Well, Kevin, you're, you've been uh, running the Piedmont Triad Airport for 13 years, I believe, and uh, it's getting better than ever right now. Uh, talk to us about the airport industry in our state. I think it's a really strong uh, state for this industry. Obviously, you've got one of the biggest hubs in the country here in Charlotte. And, and then in Raleigh, you've got one of the biggest growing, fastest growing cities in the country. Um, and then we occupy this this niche here of um, you know a place of employment in the aerospace industry with with Honda with Heiko now Boom Cessna FedEx and uh, you know another ten companies that are in line right now that we're we're chasing um, and I, I think that it's just our brighter days are, or our best days are way out in front of us uh, right now it's, it's going to be great. Well, how do you account for the successes at the PTI in the last couple of years? Well, I would go back to the last question to some extent. You might remember last year on this uh, this same roundtable, I think I told the story about how uh, with the Boom Project, um, you know, it was Mike Fox putting me in touch with Brian Clark and Kevin Lacey, who was the state highway engineer, and those guys figured out how we were going to move, and the railroad, by the way, we were going to figure out how to move big pieces of fuselage from Wilmington to here. And, and it, you know, I think that the, the transportation network, um, having it in place was absolutely uh, crucial. And then the rest of it for us is really just the fact that we were prepared, right? I mean, we've been working for six years on grading sites speculatively, basically, without any customers to, to speak of uh, at that time and um, getting all the infrastructure in place um, on the airport so that whenever the opportunity did arise, we were ready to say yes. Yeah. David, if, if I could tag on to just one thing Kevin said there, it's not just the, the, the bridges and the, the highways and the, and the train tracks. It's, it's the people we have. That's a key distinguishing factor. I think for our state, our, our transportational professionals are customer service oriented. And I, and I say that because I recently was having a conversation with the uh, folks at Boom um, at their recent announcement or their groundbreaking. And they specifically said, they said the speed with which North Carolina answered that question that Kevin Baker just posed mm -hmm. was stunning to us. And uh, another state that was a very close competitor to ours basically came back and said, we're not sure if we even can do that. And we don't know how long it will tell it will take us to tell you if we can do that. And our folks, uh, as Kevin will tell you, basically said it can be done and we'll figure it out quickly. Yeah. I was going to ask the classic reporter question of how does our state compare to other states? Would anybody else like to weigh in on what Mike said? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, let me jump in on that as well. I was going to echo several things that we've heard here, but just building on it as well. I've been at this for 20 years, uh, working with our elected officials and our partners, trying to move things forward, whether we're talking new interstates, which connect our metropolitan areas to rural North Carolina and just how important that is. I can tell you straight up, if we did not have those relationships with our NCDOT leadership, our board leadership like Mike right here, and our elected officials at the federal and state and local level all saying, hey, we've got to get this done. I mean, we've all been at different trade meetings or other meetings where we talk to our counterparts in other states and we talk about how good the relationships are here and how good things work and what it means for like a North Carolina way of doing business. But North Carolina doing business is based on really two things, partnership and results. We need both of those things and they relate to each other. And I've lived in other states. They're all great states to be from and go to, but North Carolina is something special and we continue to do that. I was just going to share, I think that the vision that the, the state set and the support uh, that we've received at the ports really to allow us to reinvest in the facilities have allowed us to become a more active tool in the economic development efforts. And without those investments, without the, the capital appropriations, it's probably a different discussion in, in many of these opportunities. Does uh, increased density in the state present greater challenges to, to our growth? I think it absolutely does. Look forward to hearing from some of the other panel members here. But, you know, again, from the standpoint 
of uh, where we see it. My law firm has about 300 uh, lawyers and staff and as a fairly significant employer, frankly, in the, in the area, um, it is absolutely critical for us to be able to keep, um, you know, keep everybody moving and keep, keep the, uh, keep traffic moving, keep, keep the highways moving and come up with creative solutions to deal with the incredible growth we've got. I think we're doing a, a really good job of doing that as an area. I think we're doing a good job of getting out in front of some of the problems some other bigger metropolitan areas have faced, but it's going to continue to be a challenge for sure. 